tell us for our sisters? Or should we start with the brother? Let's start ladies first. You know, many of our sisters, may Allah preserve them, Ameen. and they are the gems, they are the ones that we love so much, and Allah has honored the Muslim woman. She's not one that is out there parading herself, and one who is out there for that attention from men. So He's given her certain things that will protect her, the hijab, for instance, right? She's establishing the prayer, she's trying to... Can we elaborate and talk about the importance of the Muslim woman having her Muslim identity and sticking to it and not taking the identity from pop culture, from Britney Spears, you know, from all the other things and people who will only lead her to destruction? Well, I think that you know, it's, it's obviously all about perception. Many of the things that have, you know, it's, it's a hypocrisy in our culture that a nun, for example, can be covered from head to toe and can be considered being devout to God. And then a woman, a Muslim woman who's covered head to toe is considered, um, you know, oppressed and things of that sort. This is the greatest way to show your honor, to display your honor. Um, the struggle of, of women throughout history is that don't judge me for who I am on the outside. Look at me as a human being. Judge me for who I am on the inside. In essence, the hijab, that state of being, forces everyone to do that. You look at them for who you value them for who they are on the inside. Their their speech, you know, the way they think, the way the, the the skills that they have to offer to society. All of this is appreciated in Islam. Their scholarship. We have many women scholars in our history. It's all appreciated because, in essence, a woman was not judged in Islamic history by the amount of cleavage she was showing or how short her skirt was. It was, it was about her devoutness. And, as, you know, you get, what you, you get what you're looking for. You know, if you walk into, you know, when I take my daughter to, uh, to a grocery store, she picks up a bag of chips. I'll let her eat that bag of chips, and then at the end, we'll just take it to the cashier, and we'll just let them scan the bag, you know, the empty bag. And they won't mind that. But if I was to try to grab a mink coat or something of that sort that's preserved in glass and that's hidden and concealed, that cannot be touched except by a customer who looks serious and who can put something forth, you know, can demonstrate their seriousness, then that shows me that this is a thing of value. And it's not just for me. And many, there's a misconception that hijab is because men can't control themselves and it's like a punishment. But it's actually to honor the woman. It's to honor her, to elevate her and um, to, to give her her due, her due right and her due honor. So, alhamdulillah, we're, we're, you know, we're thankful to Allah that, you know, and, I, and we always challenge the non-Muslims to go and to ask Muslim sisters, was this forced upon you? Me as Imam, what I used to have to deal with all the time was parents who were afraid for their daughters who were insisting on wearing hijab. More so than, than parents who wanted their daughter to wear hijab. Hmm. It was women who were proud, who were... Uh, going into various fields, medicine, law, whatever it was. And by the way, statistically speaking, Muslim women are second in, as a minority of women in terms of their earning in this country. Okay, so I mean, they're, they're very proud women, they're very devout women, and at the same time, alhamdulillah, uh, they honor themselves with what Allah has honored them with. And we, you expounded on the verse from the Quran, which is the verbatim word of the Creator. Tamper-free, tamper-proof. We have it memorized by millions. It's preserved to this day. Is it right? Absolutely. So we talked about some of the things that you know Allah is is talking about, and now we mentioned the importance of you know being grateful and thankful through obedience to the Creator. But now let's say the argument comes in. Yes, okay, I agree. But now if I wear this modest way of dress, the hijab, that the whole attitude obviously goes with it. Now. I might lose my job. I might not be able to get to the next level in my business. My family, they are going to disown me, for example. Now, does that fit in conjunction with this verse? Can you elaborate on this, talk about it? Well, I think that you know, one of the things that we have to put out there from the start is that many people will not choose Islam because they're afraid of commitment. And in, in essence, what we see happening in our country today is, is uh, the rise of non-committal, uncommittal religions, or factions of religion, so non-denominationalism, uh, Unitarianism, so on and so forth. And, and although the message might be good, uh, whenever you look at it from a general perspective, it doesn't offer any specifics of how to draw close to God. So yes, sometimes religion will be inconvenient in this worldly life. 
you will have to make sacrifices, you will have to struggle. Because in, any, in, in life, anything that you want to succeed in, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You want to become a better businessman, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of time, you're going to have to sacrifice some friends you know, that are holding you back. Uh, so, yes, you will make sacrifices. But at the same time, certainly, uh, I, countless times, you, know, you see Muslim women who started off wearing the hijab, who started off concealing themselves, and yes, they faced massive opposition, and then alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened ways for them and with time, and the same people that were disparaging them for wearing the hijab actually came to respect them for wearing the hijab. I look at my mother, mm -hmm. may Allah have mercy on her, as, as a primary example of that. When she wore hijab, she was the first in her family to wear hijab. And she was criticized, she was uh, looked at in such a derogatory way, and, and you know, by many parts of her family, but alhamdulillah, they came to admire her and respect her for, hijab, for her hijab. So much so that when she passed away, some of her family members were asking for some of her hijabs. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. So Allah makes it, either Allah will make it easy for you in this life, or the message and the blessing will carry over after you pass away, and that will reward you in your eternal life, in your, in your hereafter, inshallah. But you've got to make sacrifices. Men have to make sacrifices too. You know, it's not just for women to do. Yeah. Men have to make sacrifices too. Um, and you've got to understand that Islam does require a level of commitment. There's no doubt about it.